Oops, and Zudas. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to the vlog. So I want to wait a few days to make this video and kind of express my thoughts in more of a clear, concise, and constructive manner and kind of learn more about uh, this whole DA situation, why it happened, and kind of give uh, my own two cents and my own opinion in regards to uh, this ordeal that we're in. Uh, if you guys don't know, the DA was the highest, Development Academy was the highest youth level, youth league in America, and it folded I guess now 10 days ago. Um, so massive news coming out of uh, the US in regards to kids playing this game and our future at the youth level. Now, if you guys don't know my story, uh, playing the game and my history playing high school, I played DA for two years, once for IMJ Academy, then the other for uh, the Chargers. And it was a massive step up from just playing high school and club. It was a massive improvement. And for those saying that it was a waste of money, waste of time, I think it's being a little bit foolish because it was a massive success in my opinion. I can't prove that obviously because uh, everyone has their own opinion regarding the game and uh, the DA, but training, Four times a week was promised uh, back when the league was established in 2007, which was, again, a massive step up. If you guys think, I know most of you guys are like 13, 14 years old that watch the channel, maybe some older guys in college, but it was a massive improvement from training three times a week. And that was a norm back in like the early 2000s was training like three times a week. If you were training four times a week or five times a week, you're considered elite. And um, yeah, guys, that was, that was a massive improvement training four times a week. And that's what DA promised. Less games, but more competition. Competition, I think they fulfilled that um, to the utmost. And uh, for those people thinking that we've gone backwards the past 13 years, again, are being a little bit foolish because the best players for the past two or three cycles for the national team have come from the DA. And uh, the players we have in Europe right now came from the DA, most of them at least. Uh, maybe not Christian Pulisic, who came from PDA, I think. But having said that, the majority of the success we've seen the past 13 years have come directly from the DA. Now, I'm sure most of you guys that know soccer in America have been following this new league that's gonna be, I guess, announced pretty soon with MLS Academy teams and uh, a few select DA club teams. We'll talk more about that in a second. But um, if you've been following kind of the MLS podcast the past month, there was one that was published, I guess, right after the DA uh, was canceled. It was one with Fred Lipka. Fred is a funny guy to say the least. Um, he was supposed to really make known and make public and really just calm the waters and make clear why DA was shut down. He has a pretty high position in youth soccer in America. I'm not sure his exact title, but he's a pretty powerful guy uh, for youth soccer in this country. But uh, he made no sense throughout the entire interview. It was an absolute brutal podcast uh, with him at least in it. And um, I had to actually transcribe what he was saying because I couldn't understand a word he was saying. So what MLS was trying to do um, didn't really work out because what he was trying to express made no sense because no one could understand him. So really bad job of really calming the waters uh, from MLS's part and from uh, US Soccer's part because nothing was expressed clearly. It was still kind of humble jumble. Nothing was, again, made known in regards to truly why DA was shut down. We'll dive into some of the rumors and opinions in a second, but Fred is like the equivalent of Kellyanne Conway. If you guys don't know who that is, she's the most uh, evasive uh, answerer when it comes to questions there is when it comes to politics. Watch her interviews, absolute masterclass in evasive questions, or answers, rather. But Fred is that, where he doesn't answer a single thing, he just goes down a nonsensical rabbit hole for five minutes, and doesn't answer a single question. So what's the solution here in regards to why DA was canceled? what's the reasoning, what's the pattern here, and uh, what's been happening behind the scenes that they have been telling us. They're saying that it was financial reasons. It was COVID to blame. If you look at the official statement from the USSDA, they're blaming COVID on the reason why the league was shut down so quickly. And I think there's a few reasons that they're not really truly expressing that I'm gonna dive into here in a second, but they're blaming COVID on the reason why the DA was shut down so quickly and so rapidly. I'm sure there's a few underlying things I didn't see from them in regards to why it was shut down, but that's the main reason, COVID. And here's my opinion, here's my solution to this. Uh, again, opinion is very important to state because people throw a hissy fit down in the comment section. Let's just agree or disagree if you guys have um, altering opinions. But having said that, I think U.S. Soccer has been thinking about scrapping DA for a long time. From what I hear, girls' DA was dying, uh, financial concerns started to mount, um, the competition started to plateau, and I think money was the main motive to keep the league in existence, and uh, when that started to lack, they decided to scrap it. But um, I think COVID was 
the excuse to get rid of the league and not the sole motive. I know most of you guys are like, why not just cancel Girls DA if that was the main issue, if that was the main prom? You could, but you can't because of the equal pay lawsuit with the women's national team. It'll look really bad on the US's part if they canceled the highest competitive youth league for women and kept the men. It would look really bad on their part. So they're essentially stuck losing money in a dying league and can't do anything about it. Um, if you guys know anything about the women's national team lawsuit, they're claiming that uh, they're not getting paid equally as much as the men. And uh, if you guys know anything about market value and market valuation, how it works when it comes to players being paid what, the market dictates what players get paid. It's not equal pay, it's just no, the men's side is more lucrative than the women's. The women's side isn't there yet when it comes to the market marketing capabilities and uh, how much people are watching the game from a sex standpoint. Um, it's just an absolute joke. But the DA couldn't cancel the women's side because of the equal pay lawsuit, which is being, I guess, processed through the courts. Um, again, absolute joke. I'm a big fan of women's soccer, but what they're claiming is kind of foolish. But that's my opinion. Now, to be fair, guys, I think US soccer was set to lose millions of dollars over the next few months with DA being canceled and closed, probably until next year if they kept the league in existence. Um, so they're going to lose a lot of money. But if they can't fund the league, you know, until next year, uh, with the money reserves they have, I think they're going off month to month to pay for the league. There's a major problem that uh, need to be relieved. I think it was just becoming a headache for them and they were relieved to get rid of it um, after 13 years. But here's their official statement back on uh, Thursday, whatever date that was, here's what they said. This was an incredibly difficult decision to make, but the extraordinary circumstances around the COVID-19 pandemic have resulted in a financial situation that does not allow for the continuation of the DA in the future. We know that discontinuing a program that has been with US soccer for many years is shocking, but these unprecedented times require taking action now. I think what they should have said was this. These unprecedented times require taking action now to save our own necks, save us millions of dollars in the coming months, and over 300 plus clubs that have all supported us from the beginning. I think that sounds a lot better if I'm being completely honest. I think how they handled canceling the league was uh, by far the worst way you can do it. Uh, rumors and speculation, then finally bringing about a tweet and a few Instagram posts. Like, it's just not the right way to do it in my opinion. But uh, again, we're at unprecedented times, right? So what can you expect? But do I like how they handle canceling the league? No. But do I think they made the right choice in canceling it? Yes, and here's why. The way the DA was set up back in 2007 was supposed to enhance the level of play. Less games, more competition, more traveling. In the past 13 years, we've achieved that uh, relatively well in my opinion. But playing American versus American is only going to go so far when it comes to improving our performance on the pitch as a country. We need to look abroad, expand our horizons, look outside the borders, and play teams outside of this country. And with the DA, that wasn't really possible. We had a few tournaments here and there. We had a taste of what international games were like with the Dallas Cup, Manchester City Cup, and Generation Adidas Cup. We've seen what it's like to play teams outside these borders. And uh, we haven't really fulfilled the true opportunity of playing teams abroad with the DA because the DA really restricts uh, the amount of games you can play because the schedule is just so freaking hectic. So with the elimination of this league and the formation of this new MLS uh, Academy League, I think we're gonna have a lot more opportunities to play teams abroad and playing teams in new environments and hostile environments, playing different time zones, uh, staying in shady hotels, playing on backyard pitches, it's just gonna give a new dimension and new challenge to players that the DA just cannot provide and give more development and more experience to players that we haven't seen this country as of yet. So as a footballer guy, as a soccer player that's played in America the past 20 years, I've seen a lot of change, a lot of development in areas where I didn't think we'd ever see the kind of exposure and attention as now. But um, fast forward six years from my last DA game and uh, a lot of things are happening, a lot of things are being done in the right way. But in order to see the change we need in the country at an international stage, it was meant to be. It had to be done. And uh, there's a lot of things that still need to be done in order to get the progress we need to compete at the highest level when it comes to international play. And the first thing is the pay to play system. The next thing is just giving players in lower income brackets and, um, and teams aren't the best in the best leagues the exposure they deserve. Because again, the players that you know, are the best sometimes aren't in the best league. And um, they're located in rural areas across the country. They're not always in big cities. So giving these players the best opportunity to get noticed at an affordable price is something I think needs to change relatively quickly to see again the progress that we want to see in this sport. The 
next thing is just making our tier structure and just soccer system in America a lot more fluent, a lot more easier to understand for the average player. Because even I'm confused right now, I've been playing soccer in America the past 20 years, I have no idea what the heck is going on right now when it comes to our tier structure, what's going to be moved around next year and the year after that. We have uh, six divisions in college, uh, six college leagues. We have five semi-pro leagues. We have four pro leagues, but no promotion relegation. Just having one heading, one title for our entire system would just be so much more beneficial for players to understand what path they need to take for him or her to see the best development in their game. The last thing, guys, I want to touch on just uh, briefly here is just giving the power back to the players who know the game the best. Uh, the former U.S. soccer men's national team president, or maybe the entire national team president, I was looking at his Wikipedia page, and he has no soccer stats, no soccer resume whatsoever. Maybe I'm just not seeing it right, but he worked for Goldman Sachs and graduated from Harvard. I want to see the U.S. soccer president have accolades like Tom Brady has in the NFL. Like I want to keep on scrolling through his Wikipedia page for hours, seeing his accomplishments and seeing what he did for U.S. soccer, not his business resume, how much money he makes, or how much money he can make for the league, what he can do to enhance the level of game in the country. I think we've been hiring more business people for the U.S. soccer national team than we have actually people who know the game the best. And that's one thing, again, I want to see change is just more emphasis on the game and not money. But I think that's pretty much um, all the things I want to cover in today's video, guys. I'm going to do a future video about just everything wrong with the U.S. soccer system. This was kind of a brief video and kind of um, you know, something I wanted to make pretty quickly. I know it took me two weeks to make it pretty much, but um, I want to make my points um, as accurate as possible. So that's the reason for the delay, but I want to do like a half an hour video, more like a masterclass in regards to uh, why we fail as a country from the men's side at least in, uh, in this sport and uh, just really drive home the main points, the main attributes that have led to um, our demise and uh, what needs to change in order to see the best development. We touched upon a few today, but I think there's a lot more that need to be discussed. But um, if you guys have any questions or things you want to add to this discussion, debates, uh, your feelings and emotions regarding DA being shut down and just uh, what you think the future holds for U.S. soccer, leave them down below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. But of course, I'll check you guys in the next video. Deuces!